Hi everybody, remember last week or so when I said the bench replaces the couch? Well, this is part two, and welcome. I'm glad you're here, but first, my usual stuff. Welcome to this episode of Brain Snob. I'm glad you're here. This is the community of people who know that there is better brainwashing, and I'm here to offer you better brainwashing. Everything you're exposed to brainwashes your brain. And just the same way that you develop good habits, it's the same thing is how you develop bad habits. And we're just gonna utilize the better brainwashing. That's what I'm gonna call it now. But why do I want you to be a brain snob? Because I want you to understand if you know how your brain works, you can give yourself amazing life experiences. The brain makes the body so you can make your life. And how's your life going right now? We need your full participation in the world. You can't do that with an impaired brain. So let's build it up. Let's make it better. And if you're half healthy, meaning you still got some nagging things bothering you that you kind of put on the back burner, half healthy is still half sick. And half a solution, you might be doing some good things, but there, you, you may want to fill those gaps. So you know you've got half a solution, but that's still half a problem remaining. The brain and spinal cord control everything in your body. So let's just start at the top. And that's why I'm a chiropractor. And it is more than a procedure. I do use the chiropractic adjustment, uh, accessing those spinal points on your back and to reach your brain. It's a pretty neat way of understanding the physiology of the body. I have access to your brain that's uh, very positive and beneficial, but also chiropractic is a philosophy of uh, living congruently with your innate intelligence. So I want to talk about things that are congruent. I love that word. Let's be congruent in our um, approach to everything we do. Also, when we uh, act as if we're smarter than nature, that's kind of destructive because we're in a delusional way of looking at things. So chiropractic is not just how we uh, tweak your muscles and help you move better and relieve some of that pain. Uh, no, it's more than that. Uh, to me, chiropractic is the serious business of saving lives, keeping that brain connected to the body. And we need to respect and support your innate intelligence as it's working through your physical nervous system. So thank you for being here. Let's continue on with uh, my talk today. So the brain replace the be sorry, start over. The bench replaces the couch. And I talked about how my interest in mental health earlier in my life brought me to chiropractic. I was a mental health therapist working in a satellite office. I was working mostly with people who had very chronic, severe mental illness. So we're talking schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, uh, maybe some borderline personality in there. And that's what I was doing because I'm really interested in psychology. That was how I got my start. I just like that kind of stuff and understanding how as a relationship um, is developed and how people share their stresses and their understanding of it and we build that rapport, we can help change the brain and help people just deal with life better. And that's was, that was my approach as a mental health counselor. And we know that psychotherapy does make changes in the brain not as quickly as we'd like and I also noticed there were holes in that as well. I'm always looking to fill those gaps. I did hit the pause button for a moment. I was answering a text message and making sure it wasn't something related to the office today. Uh, so in the mental health arena, which I love, 
I decided when I was learning about chiropractic that I could bring that to the chiropractic table. So the old in the old language is the bench. So my chiropractic table's over here. We the ones that are don't move and they're just a flat cushion type of table. Sometimes we call that the bench. So the bench is going to replace the couch. Working in mental health, I didn't have a couch. People didn't lay on the couch. That's you know that that kind of thing. But um there's there are also the other areas the gaps we needed to fill and number one is the health of the brain and how is the brain perceiving the environment because if your brain is translating things incorrectly you're just gonna bumble and fumble through life now I'm not belittling the situation of depression and mental illness but I would like people to look at it in a different view so it, the stigma isn't there and so people also can realize there are other ways of resolving issues than the traditional approach that I worked in. So in the video of last week, the bench replaces the couch, the initial video, I talked about the chiropractic history in helping people with mental health challenges and I left out one important piece of information. So I, t I told you about the 1930s and 40s and 50s and how the chiropractic hospitals were doing great things for people with mental health challenges. And the um, one of the judges, Judge Ponath, wanted to lobby to get chiropractors in all the hospitals across the country. That's not happening right now. I mean, that was decades ago, and now you see where we're at today. And I talked about how chiropractic, when you add it to an addiction program, you have more success and the just the long-lasting benefits are there. And that's that's in the scientific journals. We know that. But I left out my own personal um, experience because I did have a personal struggle way way back in my 20s and so it was not going into detail here it was a shock to my everyday living situation it turned my world upside down and we all have these from time to time and in the office I was offered the office where I work of course I was offered some free drugs because we got tons and tons of free samples that we could give out to our clients. In fact, back in the day, I would write to companies and ask for free samples. This is completely different from what I am doing today and helping people reclaim their lives that's in a way that's empowering. And to me, um, the medicines that we were giving people, not empowering, just made them feel worse about themselves. But I obtained a lot of free stuff and kept that file cabinet full of samples. And I had, I had that kind of a relationship with the pharmaceutical company. So when my coworker said, hey Lisa, let's go into the cabinet and maybe you need some Ativan. I can't remember, I, maybe it was Ativan, but just something to help me um, calm, stay calm, and because, well, I was upset, I was crying, I was crushed, I was depressed. And um, that was offered to me. And that stopped me right there. I, I put on the brakes very quietly and I said, no, no thank you. I need to learn from this. I don't think I said that part out loud, but it was in my head. I need to learn from this. And I, I knew that just deep down inside. I said, there's something to overcome from this. And I, I said to myself, 
I need to feel this. I did not want to uh, numb my feelings, numb my emotions. Yeah, that's great. You want to set it aside temporarily, but I don't think so. I told myself I needed to feel this with just this this huge encompassing feeling around me. Otherwise, I wouldn't learn and move forward. I would just probably hmm, stay in that same pattern of functioning. So when I say I need to feel this, that may sound cliche, but I needed to learn from it, I needed to absorb it, and just come up with a new way of functioning. And I, I think that's what I did. Um, that was a long time ago. So I was in my 20s. So everything in your 20s is like the end of the world. Don't be offended if you are in your 20s right now. I'm, I'm really glad you're watching the video if you are because you are going to be way ahead of everybody else. And that's why I have um, my What Side of Stubborn ebook. It's called What Side of Stubborn, How Do No Harm, it's a long title, <laughs> How Do No Harm, I Had to Undo Decades of Harm, something like that. I'll put it down in the show notes. And um, so uh, there's, there's the situational depression, there is such a thing, and um, there is clinical depression. Yes, there is such a thing. And there's, there are a lot of things we can do outside of the usual, you know, the easy things. Yeah, showing up for an appointment with a mental health therapist, that's not always easy. And, but you can do that and folks will talk about what they're going through and then focus on new behaviors in that supportive relationship. But not everyone does it. Not everyone moves forward, even though they're in a supportive relationship with um, a listening therapist, they don't move forward and try new things. And that's the whole point of therapy. You can sit there day after day after day and talk. That doesn't really give you new change. Now let's talk about the chiropractic adjustment because we know scientifically that does change the brain in a faster manner. And when you get a receive a chiropractic adjustment, we know the prefrontal cortex is stimulated. It's, we wake it up is uh, the short version and how we explain it. But we do know that the brain changes from chiropractic care was more in, it, it produced brain changes that you got qu quickly and more than in uh, multiple weeks of standard psychological treatment. Now this has been studied and it's been published. I have to get my hands on it so I can have the whole specific study. But if you understand brain-based neurophysiology, that's a big word. If you understand that's where we're headed in the um, the focus of brain health, and, and I love it, brain-based neurophysiology. That's what we need to do. We got to work on the physiology of the brain and it helps you just do great things for yourself. So short answer, chiropractic helps you get more out of your brain than um, talk therapy. I say combine them. You have talk therapy and chiropractic together. Do them at the same time. N not necessarily on the same day, but put that in your routine and just immerse yourself in both. And that will give you a tons and tons and tons of boosting of your brain. And then you need to ask me, why do I have these colored pictures of brain parts? I have this hanging up in my office. You've got to come in my office. This is the little teaser. 
I, I, I have colored. This is my own, my own talent here of coloring. No, I don't. I don't color well. I don't like to stay in the lines. But this is another exercise. I teach people how to calm down that fight or flight system of their brain so they can feel like they can manage their stress better. Let's talk about Dr. Daniel Amen, who does SPECT scanning of brains. This is really interesting. Now, I don't send people for SPECT scans of their brains because he has summarized really what needs to be done in order to boost your brain health. He doesn't mention chiropractic, so that also should be included because that's going to speed things up so much better. And why would you want to walk around in the world with a crooked spine? <laughs> that's maybe cartoon language, but why would you? Why would you walk around like there's an anvil on your head uh, pressing on your whole entire body and squishing your spine so you don't have that efficient energy flow, brain and body communication. Not to mention the wear and tear when you get scar tissue in your body, your meninges twists around on itself and just disrupts the whole functioning of your nervous system. Daniel Amen does these scans and he can t tell in your brain where there's too much activity, not enough activity, and where things are out of balance and he can pinpoint just the the physiological aspects so if somebody would have more depression he can he can say yep i see it right there or even um with other uh, parkinson's comes to my mind areas of the brain that are not working well that affects your mobility uh, affects your thinking maybe your speaking just all these uh, brain functions that you want to see in the rest of your body. You want to see that balance. Uh, your ability to rest, your ability to uh, have good sleep and actually feel rested when you wake up. And so if you look at his uh, videos, I know he has a podcast and he has everything in his books. That is just an interesting way of looking at the brain and he talks about the same things that I talk about how to feed your brain feed your brain with food and supplements feed your brain with good activities and purposeful um, volunteering purposeful uh, recreation and just being a part of your community with um, very good relationships, just the, the whole gamut of balancing your life, but he can help connect your old stressors and help you figure out why you're functioning today that, that way as well. So he helps connect the dots in a very interesting manner and very informative. So you can check that out as well. The only the only thing I don't like is he forgets to include chiropractic. So you tell him how important that is. I always refer back to the ACE study, ACE, A-C-E, Adverse Childhood Events. And the there's one study that I thought was interesting because they looked at children who were in tough situations. They may have been in poverty or they, uh, their family is up and down where they don't have both parents in the home or they're going from home to home or they're being raised by a grandparent. Just these different situations we would call um, unfortunate and stressful. And these children were followed into adulthood and they kept track of their cortisol levels. Cortisol is that one stress hormone that your adrenals make and when you are a child everything you are taking in you decide how you are going to get by because you know you, you you have to do what you can do until you're an adult and you're out in the world and you do things on your own so when you're when your whole world is shaped by these circumstances and you develop your own way of making it some people the, the people that 
be, when they're adults, sorry for the stuttering, <laughs> they were looked at, they were, they were studied and longitudinally, they were more successful, what we call success, a stable life, their finances are good, they're happy in their careers, they found their place in the world. These same adults, we checked their cortisol levels, not me personally, but the study years, checked their cortisol levels and 50% of them still had high levels similar to when they were children. So they had the higher, they had those, st the stress level chemical is still in their body and very active. What does that tell you? 50% of them didn't. So let's look on the bright side here. You have the ability to change your physiology even though you had stressors going on early in your life. And that is promising, that helps you understand nothing is set in stone. You have the ability to reshape your brain almost. I mean, not reshape it, but feed it, take care of it, reteach it, because the wiring can be changed when you say, I want to rewire my brain. And everything we do is going to um, influence that wiring. We can maintain our current wiring or we can establish new wiring. And there's that saying that wires together, fires together, wires together. So nerves that fire together, wire together. And you can influence your brain. And that's the whole purpose of me being a chiropractor and teaching the foundations of chiropractic and how you can help your brain be the brain you want it to be because the brain makes the body so you can make your life and that's what I wanted to talk about here and why the bench replaces the couch. You want to have a better brain, you want to have better mental health it's very doable and I teach that with the BFA protocol. Look at the other videos, click like, click su subscribe, share the videos and I hope my personal story is helpful to you. I would like to hear your story and then we can fill in all the gaps where you can make your story even greater. And speaking of stories, I did make a video called Anxiety, the story you can rewrite and you can check that out on my videos as well. Back again, sorry, I took another phone call. So look for the next video and put some comments down in this video and understand you're not alone. We may have similar stories and uh, you are not uh, isolated on a deserted island somewhere. Other people understand what you're going through and we just want to help get through the stresses. There's stress we don't have control over and there's events and stress that we do have control over and I'm just helping you learn how to use your tools more proficiently. The tools you already have. Thanks for watching.